I'm just uh, connecting my camera. Here we are. Hey. <laughs> so what? Seven fifth, seven thirty a.m. Yeah. Nice. How is it over there? What time? It's three twenty-seven. Ah. It's fucking cold. Yeah. <laughs> it snowed about two hours ago. Just like suddenly snowed and then it stopped and now the sun's out. So do you have any um, heat, heat in your building? Yeah, I've put the heating on. Uh, my landlord and friend, William, he prefers to have three jumpers on and a, a big jacket. Then he's, 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 one, he's a self-admitted Scrooge and a grumpy old man. He's in his late 50s. So yeah, this is a very good at... Yeah, feeling shit. I'm really good at feeling shit. It's one of the best things I'm good at. I quite like it. <laughs> so, uh, you know where you stand. Absolutely. He's sort of been there, done it, cynical, knows he's cynical, doesn't apologise for it, says, well, what's a guy to do? There's a beauty of that. Well, it's, there's a freedom in it, yeah. Sometimes he just sits and stares out the window and says, I don't feel like doing anything. Until the point comes where he has to go out to earn money to come back in inside again. <laughs> so he's right now, he's got a garden that he's doing. He does gardening, woodwork, all sorts of stuff like that. And he's building all sorts of things. And he's uh, that's, that's going to keep him busy for a few months. So can I bring up a little bit of, uh, I guess, what is it? I felt that after my message, after I sent the uh, the Zoom call to you guys, nice hair, by the way. To who? Which guys? To you. Greg. And th then, after, then afterwards, I had this sort of uh, the beginning of, of self-reflection, the beginning of going, you know, this won't go across so well like that sort of like that realization of of my own madness like where you where you finally get in touch with you know i think this is this way but probably the other people take it that way and probably i'm imposing this way and they probably think i'm a bit of a waker because i'm doing it this way kind of thing, right and it was and then there's a trepidation there's this kind of like fuck that's why i'm blowing or, or that's why i'm that's why things aren't working because I'm always kind of like in my world of, of this is the next step that I see, but it has no correlation to other people's reality. I think it was more when I was offering a show or offering the remedy program as something that you guys could use. It's like coming up with an invention and going here, I got a kobquat and you can use this kobquat to go do those kobquatting and you're going, what are you talking about? I'm not, I'm not gonna use your comquad. I'm doing my life here. Take your comquad and stuff it, right? So I. Well, it's uh. Yeah. And I think. Yeah, of, I mean, yeah. Oh, you go. We just finished, it, and I was thinking of you personally of going, of of, kind of getting, the. Whatever I'm doing in many ways is like an imposition, of thinking and towards people it's it's like giving something that is kind of like a a weight you know what i mean kind of thing anyway i hope your cold gets better it sounds <laughs> yeah i don't know when i was one of those ah! um <laughs> it's one of my main themes because uh, i think i sent it to you the rebel wisdom thing so rebel wisdom uh they've created this course called Live Players, an eight-week course for hundreds of dollars where they'll train you 
how to be a live player in a and treating life as a game and it's like all right okay i was workshopping that 15 years ago and <laughs> it's like they've got a brand they've got a following one guy one person started rebel wisdom he got a brand he got a name he got people like Schmachtenberger on, he got big names, interviews, and it becomes popular. He's got thousands of people watching now. I've got to sell him a course now. You've got Charles Eisenstein, bless him, who is now offering courses. Um, he's brought himself a team around. He's got a guy called Olive Bishop, and he's got other people involved, and they're offering courses. He, he spends about five pages worth explaining how to offer to live in the gift and offer it for free but if you have money you can give it but it's like almost like five pages of explanation before you even start because it's about this is why we're giving you this offer of you pay if you can if you can it's free what is the gift and so on and it's like it's what he orland and these other people think the gift is this is how they do it right and so in a way you're saying, I'm allowing you to program me. Yeah. Because I'm 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 stupid, I'm unconscious. Uh, but the thing is, if I'm unconscious, I wouldn't even think that. I'd say, hey, that looks good. Hey, it's free. Great, I'll do it. And then they're telling you this is how to live in the gift. And you go, okay, I'll do this. So I personally am not someone who wants to be programmed by anybody else. No other human alive is going to program me unless I say yes or no. And that's really been a key thing for me in terms of all the thoughts that I in Verticomas have, who, who Graham Stewart is, who this construct is, none of these thoughts are my own. They arise out of relationship, they arise out of relationship with you, they arise out of everything I've read, everything I've seen, everything I've watched, and maybe information that's in the field that I'm picking up. So all of this stuff that makes up me. For me then to say to any other person, any other human being, hey, and this is where this is where the, the crux is for me. It's like um, what you're talking about, the weight, you know, the weight of it. It's like I and you and Gregory and others probably we have so much content that when someone comes along who's maybe never left their town, never done anything in their lives, don't really know much, and then they come across this, it's just like, woof, what? You know, maybe experientially they'll feel, oh, I don't feel free here. I'm being push through a course now of course universities education all of this stuff they do it because they're going to get money they're going to get a job do our stuff we're going to liberate you we're going to free your mind we're going to help you actually realize that you can do anything is there a job at the end of it no you'll be free oh great but i look at you guys and i think i don't want that <laughs> yeah. and uh, this is the key for me is how to because the guys like Charles and Arland and other people doing courses, if they're saying, we've worked out how to live. They're basically saying, we've worked out how to live and create the new game. You don't know how to do it. So you're going to give us your money and your attention and your time. And we're going to give you the tools to wake you up, liberate you to play new games. But you're going to be fucked because you don't know, because there is no new game to play yet. Because the new game is disorganized. It's about trusting life. It's about going with the flow. It's about becoming more conscious, completely radically not what you've ever thought of. And you probably might end up in a mental institution if you don't have support. Your belief system crashes, you're in deep trouble. Your family might not talk to you anymore. You might want to leave your wife and kids. All of that stuff, that's the thing. Yeah. And therefore, how do we create globally as a, a network of People have been at this for such a long time. How do we invite people in to play with us and to experience these things lightly, that it's, it's fun, and yet has also set up the system so that people can be supported? And then it's a bit like the two-tier society. If people have vaccine passports or don't, right, you can access this game because you've got the passport. And are we saying, well, we're creating this alternative world with Elijah's material, with Greg's, with Graham, with, 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 with hundreds of other people that are doing like Together Land of Bread or Atlas with his Vicarious games. These are all games you can play within this new reality. And they can all link up and you'll feel very different. You'll feel in a different company. 
yeah, how do we, how do the, because we're, we're liberating people. And therefore, I, I'm not sure that this is for the mainstream. I don't know who it's for, to be honest. Um, <coughs> so, yeah. I mean, I think, I mean, that's a huge point of like how do originators or I mean I use the word originator but maybe there's a better word freedom fighters freedom I mean people who want to keep the scope of their own mind their own mm -hmm. and yet interact with others have knowledge to share but at what point does it become an imposition like I realized a long time ago God, my nose, my nose is just stuffed up. Um, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, I realized a long time ago, you know, the first big realization for me, this is a little bit different, but it was just like my, my constant download to get attention and my unconsciousness in communication that I was pounding this guy. And he was just kind of like, oh, fuck, man. Like, are you going to shut up? But And I could just see it. I could just see this pounding i was giving him and it was like it was, it was the first time i think i really got how bad i was and then you know since then there's a you know a lot of different experiences and now i find you know like you you're on this end of awareness of going okay well who is this person what do they have where are we at you know, and, and what is the interaction in general, like in this present moment, what is the interaction? What is going to happen here? So much potentiality, but, you know, how much awareness is over there to understand who I am and how much awareness is here to understand who that person is and what can happen here? You know, I, I, I don't know if that's the game of now to you, but in, in, in my reality, that's a huge Thing. And, 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 and I think what happened after talking with you and Mark and then having this remedy program and having this spell and I said to, I, and I, said to I think I sent a message to Mark saying, wow, you could, you'd be great if you could just do a spell, talk, have some guests or something like that, right? And it's just like this, this constant, like what's the difference between coming up with tools, having people use them, but then the tools themselves are formatting the mind like i'm trying to reformat the mind like this little everything i'm doing is is, is a sort of like tools to help the mind and thinking that okay well i don't have to be there they could use them go use them it's going to be helpful but at the same well time, i think yeah i think someone like mark or myself or or others i mean we we we're creating our own tools and i think that it's like uh the, the people, I mean, it's like with the, um, just how to think about this. It's like when our, when Mark and I speak, we just generally are speaking about what's arising for us in the moment and sharing whatever is the stuff we're thinking about and sharing. And that's lovely. So if, if I'm, if I'm speaking to you, Elijah, and if it's, if it's, if it's about uh your work then what 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 my i'm just listening i'm listening to you sh you're sharing it this is what i'm creating this is what i'm doing it's, it's great um and for those who are on your vibe and, and they like your stuff all that planned and maps and, and people who like maps and things like that i'm a i'm a mapless guy i don't work with maps i say what's happening now what's next oh let's go there and then so for me maps can be useful but I think that your your approach and your structure, and maybe and Gregory's got his old framework and structure as well. That's like he's he, that's using content that that's coming from memory. I'm interested in exploring how let me go back a bit. It's a bit like Facebook and Microsoft and these companies and Google and Musk and all the people with money and power and technology who've made it through. Uh, physical stuff like operating systems and tools, electricity, whatever. They they basically have all those financial power and money to then program other people the way they they want they want this, and they can lobby government and everything else. So it's energetically it's 
they've got their attention. We are the, these freedom fighters who live on the outskirts and the edges of society, the outliers. We are playing a very different game. And we support each other, I suppose, emotionally and talk to each other. But in terms of the money and investments, who's going to who's going to who's going to support us to free people from that matrix Un unless it's a case of and, and imagine that where people are freer then it's like well what do we do now we, we, we we've woken up we don't want to do our jobs anymore what do we do and we can say well you've got to follow your own guidance you've got to follow your own Whatever. So what I think what I'm saying is in, if there was an amnesty from the old materialistic industrialized society, the military, military, military industrial complex, whatever you want to call it, that world into a post-industrial, the post-industrial hasn't been built yet. So we're still straddling the two. Some, some who've got money who've managed to sell out and now have the little homestead and are self-sufficient, they're happy, they can do what they want now. But those who don't have that, they're we have to build the news so that they can then move into that. And then one of my key questions is how do we allow, how do we decide who deserves access to spaces? Mm. Well, why should it only be the wealthy that get to see the most beautiful places on the planet? You know, why? and looking at it in VR is not the same or on a, or a computer to experience the, the beauty of some of the places on earth, which you can only get to if you've got the money for the flight and you can afford hotel or whatever. That's not fair. Um, <clears throat> but I mean, but if we look at the context of what's occurring right now and see that, <laughs> you know, that old paradigm or whatever you want to call it, military industrial complex is, is squeezing or is, is putting it in end game by assessment that is leading to like that that distinguishes between it's not just the rich and the poor it's it's, it's going to be like the, the military the military control zones like have you ever seen heard of the show called colony no on netflix I mean, it's it's about these aliens that come that bring these big walls and encompass that basically go around certain cities and they become colonies and then they harvest the humans to build some ships to defend themselves from other aliens. But basically, we we become like cattle to yeah, and and then the humans are used to organize this and they just had the, you know they have better lives. But at some point, they're the same cannon fodder that we are. But I mean, it. it it's a, it's a very, you know, I, I don't know. There's so much futurizing in the media around, you know, ultimate government control, right? Like every story that's coming out from these, you know, media companies, the enemy is nearly always this huge government that can't be beaten. And there's always individuals are fighting and they can be heroes, but at some point there's always this government that is never going to be beaten. And it's so many shows, like, I don't know about you, but I, I track a lot of the media. And, you know, the, if we are in an end game, like that's a, like, the you know, within the Kali Yuga, you know, there's the idea of the thousand, thousand years golden, or, you know, thousand years of a, a gold kind of existence. Um, you know, I'm just thinking about like the future timelines of possibility and the, the reality of what we're in. And, and there's just, you know, like, like you said, there's so many sort of people that are coming up with these new ways of being and want to charge money and make a living out of it. But ultimately, what if, you know, all of us are facing this, you know, Im imposing, impending doom from this evil cabal that is coming together with their end game. And, uh, and to me, as I see the travel restrictions and the, what's occurring with the kids with masks and schools and like, like it's, it's worse than I could have imagined. And it's all through this pandemic kind of idea. 
like that that to me is just another wave of context that i have a lot of uh facebook meme posting kind of uh insanity because i i find that i i'm looking for evidence that sh that that confirms that this is what i think and then and whatever i'm working on is sort of like this idea to sort of do something against it or to, to build something that's going to actually have power economically to protect ourselves and the people like you and me or other people are the people that actually hold the keys to do something about it but because of what we spoke about earlier, because each of us is kind of like, doesn't want to be imposed upon or it takes too much mind attention to figure out what the other person has, we're kind of like, we're not organizing in an economic way to get the funds to the people who can build that world that the people that is good for the people so well i'm i mean in terms of the so um i mean first of all i in a call yesterday i don't know if you can see that uh, it's because it's i've got to put it in front of my face haven't i or something like that there we go okay i see that <coughs> this was a channeled book in the 70s oh i read that book 2150 yeah i've read a couple times that's a great book so I started reading that and one of the conversations we had yesterday was, uh, or the day before, maybe I forget, but um, all the realities and timelines are here right now. They're all here and it's they're all happening now and we can access whatever. So it's really about Facebook and the AI will basically feed back to you what you're interested in. That it doesn't know anything differently. It's just mirroring. So if the entire population of the planet is looking for that, then then it will be reinforced, and then the AI goes, "Oh, that's what they want." So if uh, if uh, if, uh, if people are looking at that, they get that. If they're looking at that, they get that. So the the world becomes exactly what you give attention to, which is a spiritual principle. So if I'm giving all my attention to beautiful plants and trees with blossoms, I'm bombarded with it, right? So the funny thing was that, and I'll, uh, I'll you know, I was talking to Fleming Funch and uh, Mark soon about this because of the cosmic sofa and the synchronicity vortex, is that because Mark now is searching for sofas, <laughs> pictures of sofas, like this one, right? He's being bombarded with adverts for sofas, which makes make, makes him laugh his head off. So he's getting more information about all the different kinds of sofas. So his AI thinks this guy's obsessed with sofas. So that's it. And there are, this is the thing when talking to uh, you know some other friends like France, who for example, who's because she's in a world of of wealth and connected to people who are doing these things. Her reality is so different. She sees all the great stuff. She's got friends who are pioneers in the big stuff, who work for Google at a senior level, who work in other areas. So, and people like Gino knows lots of people in these positions and so on and so forth. So, and Gino's got his own approach, his strategy, his way of doing things. And I, I don't know if we're able to enter into a room that's a blank room and you know, we enter into that space, we leave all our stuff behind and we're just intelligent people in a space going, right, forget everything we've ever done or what we're saying. We've trained ourselves through life to become like this. Remove all our brands, forget about it. What do we do? Right, then we go back and pick up our stuff and then find our audiences. Because I find that when we're in that room talking about our stuff, there's no conversation. Because we don't, we're, we're sort of, if it was like a Jedi Council, just to give you an example, we wouldn't be trying to sell each other our tools. We'd be saying, right, you've got that, you've got that, we've got this. How do we support each other? And someone like Juan Carlos and someone like, you know, all, 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 all these, all, all these things. And, uh, and then I hear about 
some another crypto billionaire I won't mention him, but there's a crypto guy through people I know saying he's got his own game plan, which is not, not I wouldn't say it's anti-government, but it's just creating something new because the crypto guys are in decentralized world. That's a different that's not state money. Yeah. So that's a different game altogether. Now, how this plays out, a lot will depend upon, for me, what the generation of the current generation of 20 and below, because if say 90% of them decide not to go into politics, then politics starts to die in that, in that form. If, they, if they're the ones between, like my son's age seven up to like, when they're older, it's whether they wake up or not. It's whether they're awake. And that, that for me, that generation, uh, and how do we do that? How do we do that? That's the, that's the sense. Of, so one idea is that you have, if you've got very high frequency people together living in an urban environment, even if, whether it's Vancouver, or whatever, that high frequency will attract those who are attracted to it. Something in them will go, I'm interested in this. I don't know what it is, but I'm going. And then that slowly builds. But it means that, you know, we as, I'd say, I'm, I'm definitely a loner. And um, if I'm not with others in that way, then I have my effect on people. Sure, I'm sure you do, people around you. <coughs> but unless we're all networked and supported um, then it's harder. Yeah. Well, I mean, doesn't that sort of point to the fact that whether it's the software or the VR, and it pretty much, you know, those, it just seems that the virtual reality, the software will be blending in some way, and that's going to have, you know, massive impact on how we learn and where we put our atten attention. Have you ever heard of the, uh, the book series called Otherworld? No, nope. it's a massive, <clears throat> massive, thick uh, fiction books about virtual reality. And it was the first and sort of like the only real story that I'd read about the future, about virtual reality. And it was just a whole bunch of worlds that were sort of owned by, let's say, billionaires, where each billionaire would sort of create a world that you could go into there you, okay, you've got one, okay. Um, and the, the billionaire would set themselves up as a god because they would control the operating system. They would control what happens. And all these people, like everyone's just like on their couch with their machine and everyone's going into virtual reality and they're not participating really in real life anymore because the virtual reality is so much better. But they're moving between these worlds that are owned by these sort of like god billionaires that have set up their world the way they want it right and it just you know it, <laughs> it seems pretty you know I, you know if you look at the amount of people playing games you look at the amount of kids you look at again you look at those kids you're talking about what are they doing they're playing games and they're going to be playing better and better games and they're going to be playing games that go into virtual reality and nothing pretty much can stop that um, well it's i agree and what i just showed you there my david sent me about i've got an oculus quest 2 and i've been using it today and yesterday that was the first time i've ever been in vr ah. and i was not expecting that experience i thought okay i put it on and i'm in my home environment like fuck it i'm like, I'm like oh, fuck it hell. and he today took me to there's a Google thing called Wonder, and it's basically a 3D version of Google Street Maps. And we were going to his house, we were going to places, and you know, he says it trains his memory differently because memory has come back differently than from the 2D. And I, we were in yesterday, we were wandering around as a couple of cats in this giant, <laughs> giant. Like hotel area and i just felt a bit motion sick but i thought you know once that gets better so it's almost like the real thing and i can basically teleport transport you and i can meet in a cafe next to the eiffel tower 
we've got haptic gloves, we can touch things and move things. The only difference is, is well, there's, there's more, a lot of difference, but for me, it's Facebook in there, it's HTC, which is the Chinese company, and Microsoft with Altspace VR, but it does feel that, yeah, it's whoever dominates these spaces. Yeah. I mean, we could talk all we want, but I mean, if you can get a million kids in there, in the school system, learning how to whatever, like that's the leverage point to really affect things. And uh, I think, you know, there's going to be a movement of, you know, the VR world and then the, the organics that go, we don't want any tech kind of thing. And I mean, you're right. I mean, it doesn't really matter what, unless we sort of come up with something like, and, and then, then I think about your game and I think, Cripe, if you made your game into the virtual reality and was one of the first big ones, you know, that's the leverage point. That's where you can take everything you've learned and hopefully put it into a, a game that brings up a higher consciousness level. Well, that's the thing. It's that thing with I don't know if you've read uh, have you read Reality is Broken by Jane McGonagall? No. So it's called Reality is Broken. Her name is Jane McGonagall. Jane McGonagall? Yeah. And her dream is it's that a game designer wins the Nobel Peace Prize. And she's giving talks constantly. She's on YouTube. She's quite good. Uh, and the book's quite good. She's a researcher in, in that book. Her main point is that for many people, like Koreans, if you look at Koreans, South Koreans or the Japanese, X percent of teenagers are in PlayStations or whatever kind of game most of their life. Uh, so that says to her, right, for me, that tells us that reality is broken, that the reality that we currently, we mostly live in, doesn't work for most people. Therefore, we're going to go into these games. And so, therefore, whoever designs those realities, because this this life here, you know, even the CIA can't deal with life. It's way beyond the universal forces, are way beyond anything that's human. So, whatever is happening, and I'm still open to the fact that that you know, all sorts of stuff is going on beyond anyone's comprehension. Um, as you say, how does how does that how do we how do we turn game design into into like an activity that all kids know how to do and they're having fun learning but they're not the intention is not to enslave each other's attention because or, or or you know or greed is about ah get your money so it and for me, the greed question is once once everybody has that basic income and that's sorted out, the, hopefully the greed will lessen. But I still think that people be, will be greedy. But to design games where, where greed is, is penalized, ah. you know, then you're out for a while. Then, then it's like, okay, I'm going to play that game because I feel better in that game. This game is great. I can learn lots of money. But I don't feel good. So we have to really help people experience their feelings and know themselves well going, ah, it doesn't feel right. And then again, without the money, we can't attract people to play the, you know, Planetary Guardians as a game. If or, I, you know, Citizen 4D or whatever. I add, can I add something here that I've, uh, with, I have a programmer friend, Nova, who's been working with me create that remedy program you saw, but we're working on a, a chat room, a different type of chat room, which, you know, at some point will be pretty basic compared to these other things. But what it does is it's it's having the idea that you come into this room and let's say you're in, like here, you're in an investigation conversation. So the focus point is we're trying to investigate something, right? And that's the parameters for the chat room. And then you have a goal, and then you have a timer, you have a point score, you have a value, and then you have a team that is in this chat room. And so this is Luciel, right? So we, we tested with Luciel a couple of days ago, 
and we're, we're close to getting this done where Lucille right now is like a basic one year training program where they have 12 teams of 12 people all in, you know, very, uh, you know, energy and water and housing. And, you know, they've got the main teams that you would sort of want for programming or designing a society. But they're, they're the first three months is personal development. The second three months is group coherence. And the, the next three months is collective intelligence. And so they've been going through the gene keys. They, they've had a, a few of my maps and they've had uh, some other uh, you know, exercises that are all you know brilliant regarding your own personal experience. But we haven't got to the point of the team choosing an idea or um, you know, starting to work together in a sense as a team. Because one of the things which they, you know, everyone's saying is, is until you can deal with the shadow, until you can deal with what fucks up teams, don't think you're going to make a team, right? So that this has been one of the main backgrounds that we've all been sort of working with. But so, we, you know, I had this idea, right, of a chat room that has these components and you go into the chat room, which at some point can be a virtual reality room. And I, I can see there's a lot of programs right now where you can actually actually go into a sort of virtual reality chat, move around, and when you get close to someone, you can start chatting. But if you're not close, you, can, you know, there's technologies that are far better than your average chat room. But it just, it, to me, it's more the conceptualization of the idea first, right? It doesn't matter what technology kind of comes afterwards, but if you really get that first thing right, and that's like, again, you know, what, what, what is fun? You know, it's fun when there's a timer. It's fun when you can score points. It's fun when you have a team. It's fun when you have a goal kind of thing, right? So I also think, you know, in Zoom here, like if we had six people, eight people here, we could be, you and I, I could be chatting, but the seven other people could be typing in the chat and have a, a dual conversation. So I think we're, we're, we're going into the point where we can have a conversation and then we can have a conversation about the conversation as it's occurring, right? As sort of two threads that are happening, which hasn't been really in our species. You know, it, it hasn't existed before now, but with this new technology, we can have the conversation and then we can watch the conversation and have a sort of like a play-by-play. -play. Now in Zoom, ordinarily, this is the focus point, the visual side of things. And if we had 12 people in this room, you know, one person talks, 11 got to listen and, you know, doesn't, you could be having another conversation. Some people do when they're chatting in Zoom, right? But I was thinking, what happens if the chat is the primary and the, vi and the video, you have like a play-by-play? -play. Like, let's say we were watching 12 people chat in a room. And you and I are the sportscaster. You and I are the, the assessors. And so we're watching this conversation occur. And it's in a video, kind of, so the people can see the chat. But me and you are just going, oh, look, Mark just said a good point there. Oh, wow, Gino, he's, he's really uh, taking things over, right? I think Gino's on a roll here. Oh, lost the thing. You know what I mean? Like, I, I'm, I'm moving towards wanting, <clears throat> again, like the tool to set up. So we're really watching the conversational thread and, and be able to train people in communication by doing so. And I mean, that's something that's occurring right now. And I think we're, we're pretty close to having something that, uh, anyway, I can see you're, you're very excited. Yes. About it. Well, I mean, I mean, the, the sense of, um, there's one strand where I see lots going old school. I remember early 2000s when there was chat, like those chats, because chat's very linear, you know, and you, you know, so someone says, I want to pick up that point that was made to circle around, but it's gone off the screen and then you can't have, you know, so it really should be 3D to be able to see that point. And then, uh, and then somebody alone goes to that thread and starts to write stuff because he's, he or she is thinking about that idea I, I can't give attention to the main thread now because I'm focused on this. So I'm starting to write down here. I then go back to the main conversation. It's changed. So in terms of conversations with people, there's the linear stuff because it's all linear as soon as you start opening your mouth. And in some ways, 
anyone who opens his or her mouth is, unless it's been agreed before, is asking, I want your attention. And then to get it back, they've either got to be quiet or someone else just takes it off. And then you're okay, talking sticks and protocols for that kind of thing. But people who, I've been on many calls now where people aren't talking, we're just in presence. And we are playing more with telepathy. We're sharing, okay, what, what, what's happening? Mm, okay, oh, that feels nice, what's happening? And to develop that. Um, Lumi and all that lot I say Lumi because he's the person I know most but there are others in that world there's a whole lot of them doing this heart resonance stuff where if you and I are talking now if it's connected to my heart you'll see some kind of flowing colours and when um, when you say something you'll see you know, my heart will respond that's not my mouth so therefore I don't know, I can't imagine you can make it lie. So the, the, the body and the heart will just say, that's what I'm feeling. So if there's anger and I say, yeah, I'm fine. And then the thing goes dark red, you say, well, your heart's saying that you're not. And you, yeah, you so, so that that for me is, in, but then a lot of people say, I, no way I want to be plugged into that. So people know what I'm thinking right? You know, or what I'm feeling. So there's like, that goes the transparency thing again. And yet, if we do, and I believe we are going to become like this, I think we are Gene Keys is, is, is one you know channel thing, all these books, but if we choose it to be, this is where Mark's thinking is, and I like it, is we only place limitations ourselves. So if we want everyone to become telepathic and that's it, you can't lie <laughs> in a telepathic society. Everyone will know if you're lying. Yeah. So that sense of, um, when it becomes a norm, then there's more be agreements about state of my psychic space. Because every time I think about you, part of you will know it. Yeah. And it might come to your conscious or not. If I start thinking negatively about anybody, they will know it and I will know it. The system will be like so much stronger that we are naturally, I wouldn't say force is the right word, but we are, will be really encouraged to more mind control, thought control of our own thoughts. Very much so. And I'm hoping, I'm hoping that the inner experience is so good, it feels great that people will just naturally veer towards that. Because anytime you hear a politician speaking or anyone in, in these companies, you'll say, well, they're lying. Now, most people can, I'd say, hopefully, a lot of people can see that that, well, it's still a lot of people think they're telling the truth. And the BBC and all these news channels, it's all. But it's, it's could you have a panel then that let's say people do have some sort of apparatus on them, like like a lie detector, and they go, we're doing the news, this guy's wearing a lie detector, and this is our expression of the news, right? And so <laughs> uh, that would be interesting, wouldn't it, if... Uh, you have a news channel where people have to tell the truth or they get buzzed by some electric shock. Yeah, like, eh, ow. Well, this is what, this is like, uh, I, I th a lot of people don't know what authentic conversation is. I don't really like the word authentic, but like real. You know, I'm, I, I knew a guy who worked for so long in investment banking that he didn't actually know what the truth was. So he, he was so conditioned to lie that even when he's saying, yeah, I can hear it coming out of my mouth. That's just such bullshit. That's not true either. I'm just, I'm just, it's coming out of my mouth as I'm, and I'm watching it coming out of my mouth and I'm hearing you going, I'm sorry, that's also a lie. Well, so conditioned to just, you know. It, it would be, I guess, I can see the configurations, right, of people to have a conversation. Like, let's say we popped two bankers in here. And all of a sudden we're, we're having discussion. There's me and you and two bankers. I, I would love to have that conversation because, you know, again, the, whether it's the polarities or just whether the, you know, I would love to see us in discussions with people that ordinarily aren't around people like us and to see, you know, kind of what would happen, right? Like it's, uh, there needs to be some bridging because I think those bankers, at some point, if you're always lying, I mean, you, you just, 
you know, there, there is some part of your soul screaming, you know, for some truth. Well, I think the one, the ones who left that game or were fired or made redundant, that happened to them because they could no longer play that game. The ones who are left, they love it. They love the profit. They, they love hedonistic. Yeah, I've got my and I'm making money from money, and they love it. It's a game. And I don't think anything is going to let, you know, unless something happens to him or her, they, they'll keep playing it until they say, right, I've got enough, I'm, out. I'm going to do something else. I'm going to put my money to good because I've not lost my soul. And there's a lot of people like that. I've met a lot of people who, not a lot, I say, you know, not, not thousands, but I've met a good dozen or so people who've got a lot of money who are genuinely trying to do good. And um, that they're not bad people. And I think there's a, that there are more than around than we think. It's just that the ones who are the really, really goody ones <laughs> uh, tend to be, uh, well, I actually also think it's out of their control. Um, I remember watching Mark Zuckerberg on a video. The guy looks like he just needs a big hug because he's just terrified. Like the AI's got out of control. He doesn't know how to stop it. The whole thing has gone beyond him. You know, the investors, shareholders, management, the system. He's just this guy who, I just started this thing 20, 15 years ago, talking about my girlfriend and suddenly, you know. Did, um, yeah. did you, what did you think of that remedy program? Like, what did you think of that divination? Well, I think anything, anything that is, yeah, any any definition program that gets that randomizes things and uh, you know, yeah, I mean, I think that regardless of the graphic design and how it looks, because that can always be affected and, and set up. You know, you've got a system, you've got a maps and plans. And if, if people want to, if, if, if from the CL you get, yeah, we really like this, we want, we would, then it's what, who are these people? These 12 of 12, are these, are these business people who are leaving that world? Are they on the edges? I mean, I don't, I mean, I've met many of the CL and they come from very different range of backgrounds. Um, you know, and to, to fund an organization that, you know, I don't think they're all part of um, the sale group or paid as it were, but it's like, it's how, where are these people who want to be trained to live and, and do things in a different way and are engineers, um, you know, whatever. But the, again, it's like the non-material future where we're working all in our conscious. I believe that's what that book 2151 is a lot of it's about is that we, we start to spend more time working our consciousness and activating things. If that's gonna happen, then eventually the robots have to do all the work. So I'm fine with that. Um, it's just uh, right now we seem to be at that very, very early stage. You know, we, we're here for that reason to set up this global system. So I just, I'm just trusting it will just take care of itself yeah. i'm playing a game at the moment called game of planets that the design that the programmer working with nova <clears throat> built i didn't even know in the middle of, of our discussions all of a sudden he sort of goes oh yeah i've, I've been building this game and, just, and it's this massive online game where you basically start with your own home world and you can go colonize planets and then you can you know build your uh, essentially, of course, you're building your navy, your ship, so you're going to go attack other people. But it's it's more sophisticated than that. You you, you have a lot of uh, infrastructure to build before you can do anything, and it it basically gives you the mindset of a sort of empire commander. So it creates the thinking of going, okay, I'm in charge of Earth. What do we need to do here in order to expand the empire out? So it's it's these games teach you know, a type of thinking that can't come in any other manner. And right now there's 30 people playing. And I think Olivier from uh, OCL is in there. And I, I built these two ships. I, I like it You really, in your research, there's a lot of different ways you can go. And it actually takes, he's got a lot of time components. So things take quite a while. You got to wait. Like sometimes 
days or weeks before you get something working kind of thing. And because of that, every empire is going to have a different focus of attention on research. And so I, I got my, my shielding and my, my speed of my ships up quite quickly. And so I've sent the Scharnhorst to the Nishau, like I, you know, the two German battle cruisers. I don't know if you know World War II ships, but the, the Scharnhorst and the Nishau, probably not pronouncing it right, right? But I'm using the battleships from World War II that I know as the names for my ships. So I just <coughs> recently sent two of these battleships, which probably are ahead of their time technologically compared to most empires, because I played the game before. So I, I think I'm a little bit ahead, perhaps. I mean, he told me I am. So I, I've got a higher tech. And I've got, and I, and I'm sort of bored because you just, I, I want to sort of like create some mayhem a bit. And then I'm going, well, wait, I should play this game as if I was actually in reality. And do I want to go blow planets up? Do I want to go do this? You know, you know, there's this big choice mechanism because some players, they never want to attack. They never want to get into war and other players, they want to go into war. Right. And I'm kind of on, I'm, I'm a little bored. So I'm thinking, okay, I'm going to send these two ships through the galaxy and just start blowing things up <laughs> and and it's it's kind of like again in the games like you know how much within the game do you actually stick to your own moral world or how much in the game do you go look i'm going to be darth vader i don't care and i'm just going to go start blowing up planets right i think most people they know the difference they don't care and they're just going to blow things up right that's the fun of the game is that you're in this combat but it's Olivier who's in Luciel is in this game and he started late. So he's way behind everybody. So his, you know, he'll never catch up. Like everyone, like 30 people started. And if you come in later on in the game, you know, it's just like a lot of these games you come in later and these guys are like so far ahead. There, you know, there, there's no, like, you're just like a pawn and they are this massive super queen and they you, you know, yeah. crush you. So I was going to send these ships to, to Olivier's world and just kind of blow them up <laughs> and as a joke. But then as I was getting near and, and I was thinking, you know, that's, this is, you know, I, this is, I can't, you know, this is, this is, we're supposed to be building a new world, new paradigm. And here I am, you know, Darth Vader. So I, I wonder like the, can you create a game? And I think this going back, back maybe to your game, like where there really is a, a moral choice that has consequences where you actually learn something and go, you know, I don't want to do that again, or it's not a good idea to, to hurt this person. It's a good idea to help this person kind of thing. Well, Yes, I mean, the game of now for me is not a game. It's a game to design games that specifically are contained and designed with consciousness. Yes. Now, if I'm in the game of that's being designed, then I will bring myself to it. I would say, well, I don't want to play uh, a game which teaches my kid to destroy things. But you can do it, but I'm not playing your game. And then eventually what I have to do is to is, is, is find people who want to create games that are so extremely enjoyable and fun and that become much more interesting and engaging and the people earn credits and then so on and so forth. Um, that's the key for me is that I, I sense that the shoot em up games and the destruction games are great just to let off steam or create, but actually to become more conscious and create and be more imaginative um, and to do that together with storylines and so on, that 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 for me is where it's at. To to that 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 becomes exciting for people, for kids, you know. Like, hey, there's a you know, this year, um, what I'd like to see is every town has their own game designer, as a, as they have a, you know, the mayor. Well, here's the town's game designer. They created five games this year, and they really are helping the the flourishing of that of that town and it's 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 all because people are don't have the time they don't have the energy they're exhausted it's a compensation culture for being a slave that's that's basically it and that's the way it's been working for millennia and now we're at the point where we can design and create our own games 
and the art will be finding those people. First of all, the content has to be great and experimental and fun and the engagement piece to engage people to come in. So they go, I want to play with them, not with them. At the moment, I want to play with Charles Einstein. I don't want to play with Charles Eisenstein and, and, Orland, and Orland and all these guys. They're great. They're doing their thing. They have their followings. I'm, I, f- I don't feel like a follower. I'm not going to follow them. Yeah. Uh, there's others as well, the Rebel Wisdom bunch, they'll get their followers because there are people out there just like following. And I, w- I don't want anyone to follow anybody else. I want people to play together, to connect and say, hey, oh, wow, you're really good at this. I'm not good at that. So let's, and, and it's easier to find each other. And that frequency, I'm very good at that. I know instinctively within milliseconds, do I want to play with these people or not? So that's why I spend most of the time alone. <laughs> because I don't really enjoy playing with many people. <laughs> I much have a much better time inside my own imagination head than I do with other people's. I just I had this idea. Let's say we had this chat room, and let's say you you do the Lord of the Rings or Star Wars story, and so in the chat room you come in as a character. So let's say you're Luke Skywalker and I'm Darth Vader. And you actually, the goal is to write a, a, a kind, of, kind of comedy script, right? And so you come in as the character, the scene is that there's a goal that's the scene and there's a certain type of conversation type. And then we have to, in the moment, come up with uh, a script, right? Like, like an actual dialogue. I think that'd be a lot of fun. Well, I think in terms of, uh, this this is where the ikigai or ikigai or common things is like where's the middle ground like between you and I where I'm fully enjoying myself and you're fully enjoying yourself where's Greg's Gregory's you know so that in the middle like he's he's able to have his green table when we're around the green table what we're playing partly his game and then yours and mine or, or it's rotating All right, we're playing your game now Gregory right okay it's like it's like being kids going to someone's house Right. You know, well, I go to Gregory's house today. I'm going to play Gregory's games because it's his house. Uh, today's Elijah's game, and then then it's Graham. So, and then and then we say, yeah, actually, we could. I like that bit of your game, and that bit of that, and that bit, we could create that. And and it's all about who do you enjoy playing with. That's really what it's about, you know. And and it might take three or four times to say, hey, I really like this, but. I want to enjoy playing with lots of other people and see what that's like. Because I find it's, it's more challenging. You know? So when I was in Greece, the challenge of connecting to Greek islanders, wow. Many of them speak English, yeah, but a lot of them don't. I said, wow. Dude. And their mind is so different. And they kept telling me that, saying, it would take you a month, Graham, to actually feel this is people who'd lived there, said it will take you a month to sort of get it because they're they're in a different reality and you're in that reality. They don't see that. They're in this. So it's slow down because if you go speak too fast, do anything, move too fast, they won't even recognize you there. You just don't exist for them. Now you're slow. Ah, he's still here after a month. Ah, hey, Kalimera. And you go, hey, and then you very, you might end up with a very slow, long conversation. Then they talk well about you. And then I've told, unless you spend a winter here, you still haven't passed the test. Yeah. So it's a game. It's like, what an investment of my time and energy in a culture. And then suddenly I now have access to things. I can, I've met the mayor of Andros. I would never have met him before well you can if you say hey i've got 20 million i want to invest in your land of course he's going to meet you but do it networking yeah that's a very different thing i think that's uh you know that's a massive important point in terms of assessing people's pace like the pace of how long it takes to get to know you the pace of what they're willing to interact with you you know that's a massive yeah 
and it takes time and then eventually there's a sense of oh suddenly things are clicking here often it's when you laugh together or cry together or uh, support each other through something that's called the trial of fire I believe the fire trial um, I quite like that as a you know someone someone said to me yeah this is in Greece there was a guy this Greek guy said to me oh here comes uh, let's say it's Petros here comes Petros he's one of us and I said oh what do you mean one of us and he went oh I didn't realize it said it one of us. Yeah, what does that mean? Good question. I will think of it as some case. The Greeks love their philosophy. They went, Why is he one of us? So he said, this guy sat down. And one of my main questions at that time was, what is a friend? And <laughs> he said, ah, he's my friend and we're friends. I said, okay, so if I'm his friend, are you my friend? He goes, you're not my friend. I said, okay. How do I become your friend? Because he said that we're like, you're one of us. I said, well, I probably could be, but we haven't gone through fire yet. I only trust, I only call people friends who I've been through fire with and I can trust that person. And I can, you know, I like that. So there's a lot of people I know that unless I've fallen out of them majorly or had some kind of fight or any disagreement, then you get back. You can't, you, you don't really know them that well. And then you help them out or you say, hey, can you, can you help? Yeah, sure. And then you just forgive and move on. So I think that sense of in business, the way it's been played, you don't have that level of trust. Um, people go through fire, yeah, just trying to um, keep things going. And then to, to actually consciously enter a fire trial and push people to limits like Darth Vader, or I'm going to blow you up, I'm going to make you feel small. You know, we're going to go through some really difficult times. I'm going to challenge you to, you know, my former mentor, he, I'll finish with this anecdote then pass back to you. My, my former mentor one day on, on the sofas, he just, we were just, just being in presence. And he said, he just suddenly said, I'm going to kill you in half an hour. <laughs> and the way he said it, <laughs> as part of it was like, well, I know he could. <laughs> and this feels and he says what are you going to do with your last 30 minutes <laughs> and I thought I can just I could just go ah come on let's go and have a cup of tea and he said I'm sure but I decided to take it on mm. and I went into that right and I phoned my mum and dad and I cried I wrote an email to all the people that were important to me at that time this was 2000 Four. I said, I'm playing this game and I've just been told I'm dying in 30 minutes. So I just wanted to tell you all how I feel. Wow. And he wow. said, well done. He said, you managed to get into that state and then just watch who responds to you and how. Wow. And what happened is there was some saying, oh, Graham, don't do that. Don't play that. That's stupid. Don't. Said, okay, you can ignore them. But the ones who respond in kind at that level of seriousness, they're the ones that you can give attention to because they're coming from that same level of seriousness about what you're talking about. This is important. This is important to Graham. Therefore, I'm going to listen to it, not tell him to behave differently. Did you tell them that you had 30 minutes to live and this was your last message? I said, I've just been given uh, this, uh, this test to, to see if this is the last 30 minutes of my life, what I do. So this is what I want to say. And this is how I feel. <sighs> And I did it, and then I phoned my mom and dad, I cried, and then that was it, half an hour gone. So I remember, right, hold on, let's go. How, <laughs> we went how did they respond? Uh, some, there's a, one guy said, yeah, we're building tools for, for things right now to help with that. And it was to do with just the way society was and that not enough funding or money is going towards good people who are trying to do good things and creative things. There's just no support unless they want to be like the old stuff like that and others oh. said yeah we're doing it we're on it and then one guy phoned me immediately he said you okay are you gonna are you are gonna commit? i said no i'm gonna commit suicide I'm not committing suicide it's a test it's whatever he said oh you should really shouldn't do things like that and then when i relate that story you know chris said well what he's saying is that he would never do it 
that doesn't mean that you shouldn't. And this is people constantly trying to control, especially when people say, oh, he's a colleague of mine. I don't want him to behave in a way that's going to have an effect on me. You know? So if, if I, if, you know, if, if anything, you say, yeah, he's a good friend of mine, you behave really badly, they say, oh, well, that must be, he likes, he's like that as well. So it's, well, you know, that yeah. it reminds me of something. I was in a men's group and uh, it was like, again, it's kind of trial by fire. Like, have you heard of the Sterling men's group at all? Uh, yeah, I've heard of that. Yeah. But I went through it. It was, it was, it was wild. Like it was like 500 people in an auditorium at the beginning. They say, check your guns. And this massive pile of guns and weapons go on the stage. And I'm with like 20 Canadians and we're like, what the fuck is this going? Like we're down in San Francisco. And anyway, I won't, there's a sort of, you can't kind of talk about it sort of thing that I, I think is a good idea. But at later on, they have this weekly men's group, which was, a, you know, I was in for a couple of years and you sit around the fire and it's, it's a great experience. I really liked it. But when you come back from your, your main, you know, event, you're put on a small team. And then you you know you're you, you sort of go through a process of getting uh, connected to the larger group, and this team is supposed to be your brothers, right? Like through thick and through thin, they are by your side. And so me, I always test to see the the reality of things. And I think I phoned them up, and said, "Oh man, I need you in thirty minutes. If I don't, I'm fucked. Like, will you be here?" Kind of thing. And I. You know, one guy got back to me a day later. One guy got back to me six. Like it didn't happen at all. <laughs> and it was it was kind of like along the same lines, yeah, of, of that experience. But it's a, I think it's a great learning experience. I mean, that's a great. That's a really good. I mean, it's it's uh it's the key is to get into that state. I mean, Gino's got that thing as well as make every decision. Well, especially bigger ones, as if your life depends on it. It's a very different feeling, um, and I know how to get into that because I've I've been in situations where my life was that close to being snuffed out <laughs> at least twenty times in my life now. Um, so I know the feeling of this is serious, uh, and and the more you go through that, the harder it is to meet people who can access that state really because the vast majority aren't that they've never had it but once you've had a near-death experience or, or had that and you've come back there is a certain gratitude for yeah life is so precious it's amazing and let's make the most of it um and those people generally find each other i think um i was going to say there's a there's an anecdote of a guy who this was a long time ago so he was one of the pioneers he's his name is martin aslander he's in the netherlands um, 18 years ago, maybe even, he set up a network called Elvenstone. And the catch line was, it wasn't me, it was the elves. I may have told you this, I ain't told, but uh, he managed through the power of his presence and engagement and his charisma to attract, there's maybe, I'm sure there's at least 50 to 100 people in this network. And they just agreed that they would do their very best to support each other. So you could call them and say, hey, I'm stuck on the motorway or this, that, and someone would come and help because he puts so much effort into the relationships and the quality of relationships and, and feeding them and nourishing them like a spiritual father. Then come the difficulties when it's like, hey, you know, you're not our God, you're not our guru. But it's, it's a very, that's a very difficult role to play. Very difficult. Uh, to lead without leading, to lead people into their best self and then leave them alone. That's why the ancient master stories, it's like, you want me to teach you and go away? Well, I've, I've got uh, four ladies in Yorkton who have decided they will build a shared knowledge community. And uh, one of the, the ladies, Roy Renton, has been has a map of mine for about 10 years, had the card set for about 10 years, no real training or manual, but she, she really likes them. And she's, she's, she wants to build a new paradigm. She's very well thought of in her small town. 
and she's she's a legitimate business person. She's had a financial services company, and she she's transitioning into more of a pretty likes the tools that I have. And so I have four women that now I'm design hope designing their ideal job, and then we're looking at building this year knowledge three. So Lucielle is one place and this is another place and so it's great it's for me it's huge i mean it's it's, it's like well I, you, if you that that's a group of four women you get that you're affecting a town and then before you know it other towns follow you know well i mean again you, you know it's kind of like you build something and you and if you can build something that's better for people like the idea is within the shared knowledge community is people get to design their ideal job and they have a minimum wage of a hundred dollars an hour like those two things, you know, pretty good sells. Like how many people are going to go against that? You know, like, I mean, a lot of people, like there's a distinguisher, right? Like there's the people who have a sort of slave wage and there's, you know, some people making the big bucks and in, you know, a hundred is kind of like, to me, a good minimum wage because with that gives you enough time to free yourself to, to live, right? I mean, if you work 20 hours a week, you can, you know, 10 hours a week, you can actually live. And so like aiming at those two parameters and having, again, with my maps and stuff, like I've, I've got a way to design the ideal job and, you know, it's taken 25 years to get here. Sure. And, and actually like with this person, 10 years of wait, like and seeing like four or five times where we tried and didn't try, didn't, or could have, didn't other people came in and, and now it's like, again, because of, momentum like it like if you put an immense amount of work into something at some point you know something's going to happen and uh the and with Lucielle with this chat room like basically getting 12 sets of 12 so as a sort of like prime facilitator get a facilitator in each chat room and then they bring in the 12 people so you're cre creating the infrastructure to have 144 people work together right using the chat room as the basic sort of a unit of how we're going to communicate because I find in chats so different from this, right? If me and you were writing totally different than if we're face to face like this. And I think there's more, I don't know if there's more honesty, but I think as you get into a bigger group, the written form has more clarity or honesty than the verbal. That's just, well, yeah, I certainly think that uh, the, the body is a distraction. It's good to, to meet people for the first time to see, oh, there's a head moving. Um, you get a sense of somebody. Um, I like also the audio only. There's the this, this space. You can hear it. You can feel into it. Your eyes are shut or even or open, but you can feel <laughs> the room and the space and where people are. I find that easy. And then writing you're able to attend to the words yes and then play on words and laughing and fun and it's easier to some, there's something about words that trigger the imagination differently i think because yeah. you could say something but because we're programmed when we read books to imagine what we're reading it activates imagination more than if we're just chatting unless you're really good at it so i think that's one of the and then I don't know if you do it in turns or if someone's because there are some people who do hog the space and just write and then people writing all the time and you're like <laughs> some can type really well and others are like wait please <laughs> there's a component that I didn't tell you about that there's a support button and so there's a way to kind of like with somebody's idea, like you're saying, like you had this thing here and all of a sudden it's gone. There's a way to support that idea. And then if it's supported enough, it gets sort of lodged at the bottom. So you can take the good ideas and get the support and pull it from what you're doing. And then the idea is to print that as a PDF. And then that gets kind of saved as like the outcome of whatever the conversation is. And then that can be used you go to the next step you go, okay well you know we found the one idea now we're going to flush out that idea kind of thing so that's that like 
uh, Nova had had this idea of a large chat room where let's say you had thousands of people in the chat room that again, with some sort of supporting mechanism, you can take the ideas that got the most support, bring them to the top and then sort of have some sort of, <coughs> I guess, methodology for utilizing that. But how do thousands of people talk in one room? Well, just like, well, just that's it. Like, how do you? I mean, I've been in games where there are thousands of people sort of in a chat room and it's just constant chat and it's, uh, it doesn't really, you know, it's, it's interesting, but it's, it's like hundreds of people chatting, mm -hmm. but, you know, some people are in a little chat, some people are just, you know, put a sentence and nothing happens. Well, with, with, I mean, I was in one, I forget what it was, <coughs> was somebody, somebody was doing a, I think it was some kind of astrological unusual astrological forecasting and as there was there was hundreds and hundreds on, on on it and so it's linear it's like people write not everyone writes of course so you get all sorts of greetings from here and people asking questions and some people who like doing that constantly asking questions and, and then other and then i don't know if if the person can stop that serious stop stop right block that person from dominating the feed but then it's like if i notice oh that's an interesting comment i can I'd like to be able to click on that person's name and then go, duh, 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 duh. you know, we'd have a chat later or, and, and um, with the original visions I had for Game of Now in 2007, 2008, with technology side, because I, I, I tested the pre-programmed software that would send texts at a certain time to all the players. So I created the, the clues and then at midday they would get that clue at 1215, that one, 1230, 12. So the, that was it. And then each and then within, within that, but that was pre-programmed and pre-designed and it didn't really fit the, the now element. So what I wanted was to be able to have a whole list of players click a button that randomly organizes them into teams and, and drag and drop as well. So I click on that, right, you know, and then I've got, ah, right, I can click on that box. And now what I write in that, that space will automatically message those five. And then I say, choose a captain. So then, then I click that person, right click, make captain. I can then communicate with these. I'm only then communicating with four people rather than teams of six, it's 24. But I can still communicate with one person. Click, hey, I know you. What are you doing? Let's play this right. I'm now going to set you as the the thief or whatever. And then I've got a script that I can copy and paste, send it in. There's a stream where they're sending in photographs individually or in teams, and I can share that. I can click a click a few photos, send it back into that team. And because I've spent so long on the internet over 20 years, I could do things at very high speed. You can too, I'm sure. And others can go click, 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 send in, send in. We're, we're at, at operating as a sort of nexus of communication and, and we're not telling people what to do. We're just supporting the evolution of the story that they're sharing by being out in the world. And so basically it's just a comms tool. And um, there's lots of jokes and fun and then you can basically Everyone, everyone does something at the end of the day, you can make a video and have dinner together and play, go, look at that, that's what happened today. But the idea for me was, you know, they get teams, then you get, they get sent out to parts of the city to find the ugliest spaces. And then they, they all send in photographs. Say, oh, right, we like that. We're all going to now gather there. And then they're going to go off in teams to find stuff to create, to organize and play together, to, to do stuff together. Lovely. You mean sort of like find the dirtiest space, then you go there and beautify it kind of thing? I mean, that's yeah. yeah. I love yeah. that. Or you say, right, go out and find someone who's, uh, who, you know, find four homeless people. And then as a, as a team go by and then we're going to, you know, find out what they need and support. And then we've got three hours to improve their lives just a little bit or, or something. Wow. Yeah. Or anything, you know, and then the, the fact that, for me, I don't like flash mobs because the, the intention is to in, take over a space, do something to attract attention, and it's usually to sell an idea. Huh. 
which is fine. More inventive form of marketing. What I like is that you've got people moving around in their own reality. You see people walking around with their right hand in the air, looking at this, looking for other people with their right hand. And they go, oh, right. And then they go, this should just be five of us, right? Oh, there's one over there. Others who are not in the game watching that going, what are they doing? You know, excuse me, what is, oh, we're in a game. Can I play? Well, hang on, Shh, message. Yeah, you're in team. You, what now walk around with your left hand? They're in that cafe over there. <laughs> <laughs> Suddenly they're in the game and they're like, oh, this is cool. I mean, I'm being pulled into a different reality, but it wasn't from uh, people going around saying, hi, hey, come and join our game. It's right. just, and then those who say, wow, there's six people over there just building this beautiful sculpture. What are they doing? I said, oh, we're in this game. Oh, can I play? Of course you can just text this number you're in the the guy who's running the game will just go do it and add you in and then you're off and then what i wanted to do was have um create drag and drop tools that allow people to create their own games uh so you've got race you've got creative this you've got time bases or all that kind of stuff you can do that it's a lot of programming but you know and then you've got people designing games and playing with their friends. And then there's a competition at the end of the month for the, you know, for game designers, people select that. And then the city has a game based upon that person's game and, and, and things like that. So that, that was, a, I mean, that's a, that's a huge vision that I just, it was just me. <laughs> I managed to get to Red Bull and they're advertising people, but I knew instinctively that this would just become a crappy, one of their extreme sport stuff and it, it, I'd end up playing with people I don't want to play with. Yeah. Well, it, there's another software system that uh, a friend of mine was developing and it was about, I think I told you about it, right? Where you'd have multiple storylines where like I make a video pop, it goes on to this hashtag, it goes on to a storyline and anyone who's in there can, can, Put their own up and so over time we could create a, a show or an episode or anything right but it, it basically is doing the editing online and then you pop it out as an episode depending on on how much time you put to something right and it's i think it's a, a great idea in terms of uh you had five creative people and come up with an idea okay we're gonna talk about how we're gonna save the forest kind of thing and every three hours put a good idea in and then at the end of the day, we're going to, and it's 30 seconds. And at the end of the day, we're going to send out 40 good ideas. And that's the show, right? And that's, I think, great. You know, if you have an ability to create a theme and bring a good team together and everyone just is creating some sort of thing, pop it randomly together, you've got, you know, I mean, TikTok's kind of, TikTok's not doing it, but I mean, it's just like, randomly taking 10 different TikToks of 30 seconds, put them together, you, you'd have something pretty interesting, right? Like, so what is that algorithm or what are the parameters for bringing things together? And I think if well, you look at, let me just finish here for a second, where yeah. you look at the chat room, and then you're looking at Zoom, and then you're looking at something like that, right? Where you're in the chat discussing how in real time to do the multiple videos. So let's say Bob goes, okay, I'm gonna start out and I'm gonna start out with a question, click. I just did that. And then the other people go, okay, well, uh, I got the question, I'm gonna do an answer. So it's as opposed to just kind of random, now you're bringing in the element of, no, it's not random, we're actually figuring out how to sequence our videos together. And I think the, the I don't know, big breakthrough, but just the idea that like if you and I were doing a show together and we're doing it like game and now kind of thing and we want to do let's say 10 minutes a week and each of us is going to do five minutes and we're going to do five one minute things and we just start with a theme and then we're in the chat room and we say okay we've got 30 minutes to do it let's go right and now, now you're adding, let's say, an element of, okay, we're making the videos, we're talking about it, but we're actually in this little town and there's 10 of us in different parts of the town. And now we're coming together to go do something together. 
right? So we're, we're bringing in all these elements. You got the output of the video, you got the chat, which is helping you to figure out how to do it. And then you got your actions, which are the actual things that you're doing. I mean, that's, that's I'd say that's getting close to uh, enough of the elements to bring together kind of what you're talking about. What I think the key is thinking is is quite easy. Sharing thoughts, ideas. The hardest bit is the uh, is the for me is the engagement piece. And and then keeping that engagement. You've got lots of money. You can market to all sorts. It's easier. Then you've got backup. You've got customer support. You've got X Y Z. You know, people, the, the experimental stuff, that's usually a certain kind of culture. So, and that might be all there is. I mean, in terms of the, I don't really want to be making stuff that's just, just fun, just faffing around. I want it to be, um, I think that's what most of us are trying to do and also like with the civil rights guys you know it's like finding your gifts if gene keys is the way you i again i i it's like this one man richard rudd has a download or basically he's doing work he has a vision he writes it dedicates his entire life to writing this bible which then becomes that now I've got tools added all the rest of it i'm basically saying you know i put my birthday in and suddenly whoom that's your thing. I said, well, all right. I said, okay. It's one way of describing parts of me. It's not all of me. I'm all of it and none of it. You know, I'm in that space, the, the God spot or whatever you want to call it. So it's like, well, I can play that game. And if other people want to play that game, then we're all playing, we choose to play the Gene Keys game together. Therefore, according to Gene Keys, that's my profile. It's not who I am. But let's agree for now that's who we are that we get to know each other so i'm interested in the game where we all we all we all i don't know where we all <laughs> that awareness coming from the awareness space things just emerge and happen self-organize well you know i think there's a like you and i are on such radical ends of this polarity right like and what is funny is because my nature is more like you. My nature is in the moment. I don't give a fuck about systems and structures and all that stuff. Like when I'm doing what I really like to do, I'm like, I'm like, yes, I'm going down the beach with a speaker. I got my cat and sweep outfit and I'm just getting back to dancing along the beach. Beautiful wind, beautiful. Like just like I've been in this room doing these computer things for so long and my body's shriveling and I'm turning into this <laughs> little ogre here. And I, I know that once I go outside, I don't want to be in here. I don't want to be in the computer. I don't want to fucking, you know, I just, I, I'm, there's two sides, right? The one that wants to be in nature and fuck technology and one that's in technology and, and doesn't, not necessarily doesn't want to go in nature, but knows that to do that 12 hour day on the computer, I have to, Something has had to happen to me to shut down my body just to do what I've done. And I'm not saying that's good. I'm, I'm not saying that's bound. I'm saying in order for me to, let's say, do get the websites and this other stuff to the point where it's actually usable, I have to sacrifice something. And to me, it's been my body. And I can sit here for 12 hours on a computer, not move and actually work when I'm in my high prime, a lot of times I'm fucking around. A lot of times I'm washing media. A lot like there's such a, a degree of I'm in the flow. I'm pumping shit out versus I'm, I'm just, I can barely move and I'm a zombie and nothing is, is occurring. Right. And it, it moves, it fluctuates, depends, but like summer's coming and I want to be in the trees and I want to be protecting the forest. And I want to be, there's a whole bunch of things I want to do or be, that would be so much better if the online stuff was going on its own and, and the stuff that I have, I haven't created that engine or bridge or whatever, you know, the thing where it's working on its own and it's fueling my, my passions in the forest. 
And that's what I'm aiming for, right? Like I'm aiming for at some point, you know, I am funded to do these bigger things, which are more dance parties in the forest with a bunch of other crazy people who are having the best time of their life kind of thing. And, you know, the, by the time that happens, I'll probably be dead. Like by the time I've got all the pieces together and it's just about to work, I'll be like Bilbo Baggins, you know, fuck y'all. <laughs> and now you motherfuckers go do something with it, right? <laughs> But well, I, maybe that's true, but maybe that's who knows. I mean, that might be the, that might be it. Well, it's I mean, it's looking you know. that way. I mean, I'm 57, and you know, with the amount of time it takes to to do shit, it's like fuck. I mean, I'll <laughs> like I don't know. Like you're, it's funny that you're in the position you're in the position you are. Let's say with Chris, where it's it's when someone dies that does their legacy live on, or you know, they're they can then become the guru, which no one would allow them to be in the real in real time because no one wants to be around a guru. No, you know, no one wants to be told what to do. You know, whatever it is, right? But when they're dead, now you can go. Okay, well, this guy was you know, had the best stuff, and let's bring it out. And because he's not there to interfere with you, he's not there to 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 be like you know. What yeah, what? Well, like, yeah, his ego's his ego. His ego is not there. His body is not there to interfere. Right. So all you're left with is you're working with memory, and then you can organize that in any way you want. Um. It's a fascinating process, and uh, yeah, I've got a friend who's. You know, I trust her, and I like her, and then uh, she's able to connect to anything anyone you know, in terms of these abilities that people if anyone watches this in the future you're probably going well that's normal but right now 2021 it wasn't normal okay i don't know why i'm looking over there at you but if you're watching this in the future you know you know you know what we're talking about so people able to yeah you can chat to people who are dead in vertical commas because nothing dies it just transforms into different form whatever but uh yeah, so Chris was sitting with us and she says, no, I can feel him, he's here, he's in my energetic field and just chatting and seeing he's very humbled, you know, it's, people are more engaged than they were when he was alive. And that's because he was so difficult to deal with. And and, and that's it. when. That's the, that's the key. I, I, I'm not saying that's the same for artists or anybody out there who's got their own stuff. You've got to deal with the artist and you've got to deal with someone who knows it intimately. And for someone to say, right, here's my stuff, I'm off, I'm walking away now. Do, do with it what you like. It's very rare. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I, I definitely have a side of me that is sort of whether planning or designer or going okay when i die that's when it takes off then again people got to deal with me the stuff is out there and i'm sort of like little clues kind of along the way of going well, if you yeah well if you hear that and if you had yourself in that, you think, well that maybe that thought is what's impeding you <laughs> I mean, all thoughts can kind of impede if you really look at it in any way, but. Sure. Well, I mean, right now, like I see, like there's kind of like the rubber hits the road or like La CL <coughs> is, uh, I don't think it's going to stop. And, and my relationship, like there's a little traction here now. And, I, you know, and a lot has to do, I think, with the software tools and, um, do you know any programmers? Like, are you connected to any programmers that are sort of like sitting there wondering what to do with their life? Um, Cause like Nova's really like, he's going to school and he's, I mean, I can't believe he did what he just did, but you know, until funding arrives, you know, we need some help in terms of uh, like, it's just, we're, we're close, right. To getting this chat room. Like we've got like three or four different parts. I haven't told you about that will really sort of, create this larger 
ability to watch a whole bunch of chats and stimulate a lot of sort of discussions in just a different way. And I'm just, if you do know anybody, um, send them, send them my way. Well, I, I mean, the, the groups, the main groups that I, uh, I, you know, you're not part of One World Alliance. Huh? Mark, Mark Kane. You not you not know Mark Kane? Mark Kane. He, he's, he's in a similar situation. He's on uh, there. There's so many people. <sighs> so there's 124 people in One World Alliance. I don't know if you can add anybody in. One World Alliance. But the One World Alliance. Yeah, there's all sorts of characters in there. If you look at them, if you look at, yeah, Mark Wagner's in there. Brett, Brett's in there, you know, Brett, Brett Minster full of it and that, that. Lots of, lots of characters. They they know they're into this kind of stuff. So I'm just seeing if one Carlos is in there. But it's not an alphabetical order, I know. Huh. But I'll I'll uh, I'll because I'm I'm close to hopefully going to uh, you know to to work with Darius and others and you know as part of that world to be programming needs to be done and I don't at the moment I'm not I'm not in that world so I guess the answer is no. If you go to Facebook One World Alliance. Are they is it an open group or do I have to? invite you. So I've gone to the group, I'll just see if it's a public group. <sighs> yeah, I can invite you. Right, there you go. So I've added you, I, I just read a few posts, get the agreements, whatever, and then just ask away. So Mark is English, lives in um, Ibiza, he has spent decades, he's formerly in financial management, he spent decades on sacred geometry and on resourcing the, the new green techie stuff, the people doing graphene technology, pure water, new crypto stuff. He, he's really a lovely guy. I've chatted to him a few times. He, he lives uh, now in Ibiza with his wife, I think. And uh, yeah, he's very well connected. So like, you know, people say, hey, I'm looking for a lawyer who can do that. And he would say, oh, I know somebody and whatever. But if you, if you, yeah, try that. Okay. Okay, well, I, I think I, I need some food. Uh, how are you feeling? I think... Uh... Yeah, uh, well, William's come back. I can. I heard him about twenty minutes ago. So I'm going to say hello. Oh, can and, I just uh, can I say one minute, one final thing, which you might find funny. <laughs> um, me and Gregory, right? We've been back and forth uh, for quite a while, and we were getting we were, we were getting somewhere, and then I got like 
it's funny because I can download a bunch of maps and I wonder why people disappear. And it's just like, it's this torrent of maps that he sent me this torrent of emails with his, his writing. And all of a sudden I was just like, oh, fuck, I can't fucking handle this. And I just, I turned off, I just shut down. And then what I do is I wait to see if the other person notices. And he, we, we got quiet. <laughs> I think he noticed, but he didn't say anything. And then he sent a bit more, but I was just waiting for that. Are you, what's going on? Like, how are you? Like, but it hasn't come yet. And I think it's almost a month now. So we haven't been speaking. <laughs> we have wow. into this, this zone of both people are waiting for the other to make the move, I think. And now it's, now it's kind of funny to me, but I just saw, it's my pattern, right? I mean, my pattern is, okay, I'll work, I'll work. But if something's off, I'm going to stop and then I'm going to, see what you do in a sense and if you do nothing <laughs> then that we are going to drift apart to the point where we are not going to be in connection anymore kind of thing and if it goes well, until you until you are or not i mean that's yeah. the thing i mean i i reached out to him uh yesterday wednesday no tuesday i said to you know how about you and i have a one-to-one -one? And, he, and he he clearly wrote his response uh, while he was moving because it's full of spelling mistakes and other things. But yeah, thanks for reaching out. So uh, that's it. Next week, we'll okay. see what happens, see where he is. That's been, I would say realistically, it, that's been maybe five years since I first met him. Because with the idea, like I've had, I don't know if these ideas are true or have any relevance, but I sometimes get attached to, to, to thinking that some of these ideas are kind of like, I don't know, intuitions, but I just got the sense that the three of us could raise money for ourselves together. That there's something about the three of us that could actually, each of us has a component that is missing from the other three. And that if we could just each get funds for our own project and maybe find one project which is fun to do that sort of is this focus point then i mean i'd be into that well, I mean, I, yeah i can i can see i can see one potential of what we could do creating something together but i don't think it's going to be soon to be honest with you elijah because i'm i'm my my direction is towards me, these two people i'm now heavily involved with chris's work right that's the project that's for me is going to get funded once that's up and something's running then it's like okay because Darius is more the guy who's interested in lots of different areas. He's got contacts with like major media companies in the States that want to do new stuff, new content that's more awakened. So even creating some kind of material around, you know, Citizen 4D, Plant the Guardians game. And now as a sort of, who knows, as a reality TV type, who knows? I don't know. That that for me is a that that that's where project. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, and I got I got a few of my own primary projects. Um, but maybe there's some connection into like your that's your primary project, and then something that Greg and I have are gonna support that kind of thing, right? Like there's something that we have that your primary project might be able to really use, right? Well, to be fair, and I know because it's Chris's work, no. Okay. <laughs> ah, period. Because Chris would be, nope, not working with those two. <laughs> so I'm serious. I'm very serious. Right. He saw your stuff and I showed him other people. He said, no. Interesting. So Chris is very, this is where I'm going. This is what I'm doing. And this is the work I'm doing. And he was very, very difficult very few people could stick with them for long enough and uh well i mean i just but, but i mean this is where it comes into this is what i struggle because a lot of this comes into again is the ego stuff you know he was one of three men who oversaw the devolution of a country scotland from the uk that's like 300 years of the, that's massive intellectual senior game right he looks at stuff and goes i'm not playing with these character i am i'm wasting my time so that and i'm not him 
I've not done that. I haven't been a member of a think tank overseeing devolution of Scotland from the UK. I've not set up an actual health commission, been the chairman to help regulate that entire industry in the UK, which is massive, massive. That's foundational work. Yeah. He doesn't, he and I, he, I see he kind of tolerated me for long enough because I was, there was no one else to talk to. This not in his, not, this yeah, one. Chris, I'm not in his league when it comes to thinking and philosophy and capacity. No way. I couldn't write a book on it. I couldn't write a, a paper on the intelligent economy of Scotland, set up a constitutional commission to write a new constitution for a nation. I can't do that. He could. He could do that. He, that's what he spent time on. So for him, um, the burden on me to take on that work and to do it justice and to say, I'm not him. This is what his work is, read it, whatever. But um, yeah, that, that's the thing is that he, he polarized rooms. Some people loved him, some people hated him. Right. Because he was so good at summarizing everything and anyone that spoke, it's like everybody knew in the room that he was the smartest person in the room, everybody. And it, you didn't have to, and you'd try and challenge him and say, Okay, may I comment? And then you go, oh yeah, I see what you're saying. And that happened again and again and again and again at a senior level in Scotland. I was with leaders of the NHS and health. It's just like, they just go, well, what do we do, Chris? He said, well, we do this. Oh, we can't do that. We don't have the courage. Well, then we, nothing will happen. Period. And that's it. He never sold out. So he had the answers, but it could never be implemented because he did that. Well, because people, people, when he stood up at the, the Scot Scotland's National Health Service, the professor of public health in Scotland, who I used to know, loved Chris's work and, and, and asked for him to do the keynote twice in a row, two years in a row. Second year, Chris stands up. Hello, everyone. If you were here last year, you remember me because I did the same thing last year and I'm going to say the same thing as I said last year. Won't take me long, maybe take, maybe 30 seconds to a minute. Either the National Health Service in this country is designed for giving free health care to everybody, for those who need it. That's, that's one central purpose of the system or it's to help people become more responsible for their health. And that means less doctors, fewer doctors, hospitals, everything else. And we have a very healthy... Uh, you want that, or do you want that, or do you want a bomb combination of both? That's the conversation. Thank you for listening. Sit down. <laughs> it's until you change the central purpose of that system, nothing is going to change. And people knew that, the doctors knew it, that the ones who were honest enough, but they didn't have the courage. They've, they've got to pay their mortgages, their kids' university fees, they're, they're quite comfortable. Uh, no, let's just make everybody healthier than we're out of a job. No thanks. And a lot of people knew that and said, that guy's dangerous. Get him out of here. Don't listen to him. He said it in the States. That's why he was asked to leave. He said, so how come you in America, you can basically, you, you say people can't have nuclear weapons, but then you sell them to Iran. So how does that work? Hello? <laughs> Get this guy out. <laughs> you don't want people to think and he, he was, he was in, some friend of ours gave him money to interview all the top people in banks in the UK, the top CSR people, corporate responsibility, interviewed the heads of all of these banks. And Chris could do it because he, he had the gravitas and he had the position. So he phoned up, hey, have a chat and he would meet them and whatever, interview them. And one guy, head of, I think it was the head of Barclays said, thinking, Don't, come on, no way, no one's allowed to think. Mm -mm -mm, no chance. And he was having a laugh, saying, it's just not possible. He said, well, we'll do it if they do it, but we're not going to be the first to do what you say. So Chris introduced total corporate responsibility, not just CSR crap that, that's done now. He said, it has to be TCI. It's total responsibility or nothing. And then they agreed. He said, well, you're absolutely right. Absolutely right. But we're not doing it until they do it. And they're not going to sit in a room together and say, right, let's all do it together now, because that means their profits will be hurt and everything else. So it's just not going to happen. Uh, therefore, it just will have to crash. It's the only way that it's going to stop. 
that enough people leave it, are so damaged by it that uh, the crypto starts to build or other sorts of systems build, and then that starts to, starts to, you know, it's already happening in South Africa, for example, that uh, some amazing people have got the tech that the, basically once we go digital, it just bypasses the banking system. We don't need them anymore as middlemen. And that they, they don't, I don't think they realize it yet. Uh, so when these uh, bank CD, CD, what are they called? Get what they're called, but uh, digital currencies and banks. That's it. Payment money is over. Then it becomes it's whoever's got the digital power as the, the tools. Then selling it a millionaire in a week. Yeah. Yeah. The, my partner I'm living with is tracking the cryptos very closely and uh, always researching always and so she's you know she teaches me a little enough to know that you know the, <laughs> there's there's so many things going on in the background that you know only those who are tracking know and, and the, but most people have no fucking idea you know that, that how rapidly things are changing in that in that world yeah and blockchain and all these things but uh, these are huge conversations and i'll let you eat yeah okay, okay. Great to see you. I'm, gl I'm glad that uh, my last uh, thing didn't didn't piss you off too much. I just I just realized afterwards of going, huh, this is what I'm doing. I, my very nature, in some ways, is very uh, irritating to people. But it's also that uh, I think on that note as well, it's why I, I won't ever give money to Charles Eisenstein and Orlando Orlin Bishop because I I sat in rooms with them and talked to them. I'm not going to give them money. My peers, yeah, yeah, I treat you as a peer, and you know. So it's like, uh, I think, what do we do together? How do we, what? What are our gifts rather than the physical stuff? It's like, what? Well, sure. if you want that to happen, probably great to have Graham in the room, or Elijah's better at that. You know, have him around, or Gregory's got that, or all the other people we know. You know, I read a good laugh with, um, I forget his name, the guy in the bath, the Canadian guy, laugh, hilarious surfer dude. What's his name? He's part of your earlier groups. Surfs a lot. He lives in the middle of Canada, I think. Uh, he's in your 20. He's he's very funny. Oh, Kyle? Kyle. Yeah. So Kyle and I had a ridiculous hour and a half. I mean, that was just hilarious yeah. talking about the nappies and yeah. So a, a guy like that, you know. <laughs> you had an hour and a half chat with Kyle? Yeah, months ago, maybe even last year. Oh, Kyle's a lot of fun. Yeah, we're talking about... He pisses so many people off. Like, oh, I can imagine. I can imagine he's just really good at that and just doesn't care. But that's fine until, you know, one plays one's game and that's it. Maybe he doesn't need anybody else. But, you know, ultimately, you know, you... Only when you're self-sufficient, completely self-sufficient and have your own food growing and you're on that, you can piss off every, the entire world and not care. Say, so, well, I've got my land, I've got my food, I don't need anybody. Sadly, until we get to that, then you do have to sort of be polite to the, the, the right people so they can give you food. Yeah. <laughs> Did you guys oh, record that call? Eh? Did you guys record that call? I had no idea. When was that? It was a zoo. It was in a zoo. I was in a bar in in East Grinstead. And he was in the bath. And we ended up talking about uh, creating nappies that would be biodegradable. And basically when when always men are watching sports they can just watch it and just piss and it was that and then take the nappy off from the toilet and put it on the biodegradable compost heap which is helping to grow the food and all the rest of it and it's a circular system and it was it and the the, the branding was you're not you're my number one that was the that was the that was the branding slogan it was, like, it was just 
he's like of, of most people I've met, his ability to jump into the now for the fun side of things and to is strong, very strong. And uh, yeah, we had a lot of fun together. But he's uh, again like without like he he had to learn an off switch like when when we had our break because he basically was the reason why I was going in to teach my work again for the first time in a place which I thought was set up. He was the reason we got kicked. He got kicked out. And then because he got kicked out, I got so pissed off because I was just tired of getting kicked out or people, whatever happening. I, I lost my temper and I left. <laughs> and basically that was it. So he, he was, he was a big, and I'd never met him before. Like I just met him and I, but he kind of got on the team. And then there was, there was this kind of like he had, jumped aboard a friend that I was very close with and he they were they got kind of anyway it was this whole mad walkabout thing that was deep down was just freaking hilarious like if people understood how funny it was and and that's what like for me if, if there's humor there I'll forgive anyone anything like I just, if I think it's funny fucking let it <laughs> fucking make it happen I don't give a shit and so so many things you're funny from your perspective but to the other to the muggles or the people who who <laughs> they, they don't think it's funny no they get that that's my fine line though is like i taught for this organization and i was doing an event with kids special kids kids who had they were you know they were sort of talented it was a talented kids program so saturday morning they were doing all these things it was a week-long event of stuff I was one of the first people in with my friend and I, I happened to say, you know, do all acorns become, what was an acorn become? A tree. Yeah. What kind of tree? An oak, an oak tree, right? So all acorns become oak trees. Do, is that true? Do all acorns become oak trees? And they were like, uh, I said, well, what about squirrels? <laughs> so, oh yeah. So I said, yeah, some, some, some acorns become squirrel shit is they eat it and it comes out their bum. Now at the end of the week, all these kids, when they were asked to make a poster of their week and what they've learned through all the different teachers that came in, center of nearly every single picture was a squirrel having a shit, right? <laughs> so I, I'm driving somewhere in England. I get a phone call from my CEO going, Graham, I said, yeah, I said, can you put you in the car? Yeah, can you pull over? Yeah. And he just said, so basically, uh, two words, squirrel shit. I said, <laughs> I said, I said, oh, yeah, what about it? He says, well, I'm getting complaints from the head of the, the school and from the university. And did you say squirrel shit? I said, I did, yeah. It, sort of, it just came out. You know, these things do. You know, I'm just in a pretty rough neighborhood. I just said, I said squirrel shit. Okay, and okay, just to let you know that I had a complaint. So I'm going to defend you. And I need to know what happened. <laughs> so I had to explain. <laughs> so what are you trying to teach them? I said, well, that was a teaching point. And he said, that's, that's pretty good, actually. I should use that myself. I said, well, they learned that squirrel shit on these posters everywhere. Yeah. <laughs> the muggles just don't get the humor. Oh, that's the problem. OK. All right, my friend. OK. Love you, brother. I Ashley, love you too. Lo 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 enjoy your breakfast. <laughs> Bye for now. <laughs> Ciao.